Hey everyone, John here, and this is Something's Fishy. This is my bit build of Mad Bean's Fish Head, and it's a clone of the Maestro FSH-1, which is a notoriously difficult project, but Mad Bean's documentation and PCB made it actually quite easy. It's a combination of envelope filter and what's known as a filter sample hold, which is a sort of uh, random sounding LFO effect. For the filter effect, we've got a threshold control over here. That's how much of your signal goes into the envelope, and um, you're going to want to change that based on how strong your pickups are. Um, the resonance control down here is pretty interesting. I don't think I've really seen that on another filter effect. And that controls kind of the breadth and how extreme the sweep is. So when it's all the way down, it's a bit of a milder effect. and. You can kind of change how the sweep sounds when you when you twist it. Um, in the center here is an attack control. That's how quickly the envelope turns on. Also has some pretty interesting effects on the tone of the pedal overall. And finally, the decay control, which is how um, how quickly the effect turns off, so to speak. Um, I've built mine a little bit differently from some others. Um, I used an LM thirteen seven hundred chip instead of the two. 3080 chips that the um, board called for. I just made myself a little daughter board. Helped a little bit with some of the noise in the effect, but otherwise it works pretty much the same. Also, I um, really liked the input buffer, so I decided to just make a buffered bypass and avoid any switch pops, which is also nice. Um, we'll get into the filter sample hold section after I run through the envelope filter. Here's the bypass, and again, this is actually the um, input buffer of the effect. Threshold at about two o'clock, which is a pretty good setting with this guitar for um, not getting too crazy. The attack, the attack, decay, and resonance are all going to be at noon for the first setting. First I'm going to fiddle with the resonance control um, all the way down, it's not really going to do a whole lot. And a lot of the sweep is much more in the treble range, so this is actually like, if you really just want like something kind of weird going on, but, but where people won't quite be able to tell exactly what's going on. That's actually a pretty a pretty good way of adding like a very slight amount of interest to the notes. Um, it pretty quickly gets more quacky as you turn it up. I actually I actually like it somewhere around nine o'clock best. Um, that's probably the most envelope filtering that I want. Um, over here on the other end of the dial, um, one thing you might not be able to hear in the demo is. The sweep gets, goes from pretty high up um, on the initial quack until it sweeps downward and there's actually like a lot of bass in it. It's making some stuff rattle in the room. <laughs> there's so much bass. Um, and all the way up, of course, is, is the largest amount of sweep. Um, pretty interesting thing too, when I'm, when I'm playing loud, when I've got this down in the basement, um, you can get some uh, good feedback going because there's so much mid-range in the effect. I'm going to put that back at noon. Um, for the attack control, when you've got it all the way down, um, the attack is much more immediate. Um, it sounds a lot more like um, a lot more like a traditional, normal, straightforward envelope effect in that setting. Um, when you've got it all the way up, though. It takes a lot longer for the envelope to turn on. 
It also adds a little bit of treble back into the sound, which is which is kind of interesting. But it also sounds a lot more synthy. threshold all the way up so I can play single notes. Um, but with the decay all the way up, it takes a lot longer to shut off. So if you're, if you're playing really softly, um, even just playing softly, you can kind of hear how long it takes for the sweep to come back on. Um, and that to me is also a lot more synthy sounding. So, but if you sit there and strum chords, it'll keep climbing upwards. So if you're playing really fast, um, that's probably not going to suit the music so much. You'll eventually just not get any effect. But it is it is pretty neat for adding this sort of dramatic effect. Um, I'm going to also back the decay all the way down. And this is kind of cool because you can get these really bubbly sounds if you turn the attack and decay both down pretty far. Um, Especially when you change the resonance control, you can you can just kind of leave those in a really short setting, um, on a shorter resonance, on a smaller resonance, so get a little bit more of a um, really percussive sound out of a bass, for instance. Or if you've got a resonance way up, um, you can get that really strange um, bubble sound where it doesn't quite decay properly. Um, for the simple and hold, I'm going to put the threshold and the decay up um, just because it'll, uh, it'll kind of enhance the sound of the simple and hold to make it a little bit easier to hear. I'm not going to do a whole lot with this. It's really an effect that only makes sense in context or for a few seconds maybe on a lead. Um, mostly on chords, so, and also I don't really find much of a rate useful below halfway, so I'm just going to put it on about one o'clock and strum a couple chords. <laughs> side actually is still working a little bit. Um, if you change the controls, you can you can change what kind of sounds you get out of it. So when you've got the resonance up higher, you might get more um, more steps overall um, because you're getting a little bit more treble in the sound. And when the resonance is all the way down, it sounds a lot more contained. So obviously, if you want to really, if you want the most extreme effects, turning the resonance all the way up is going to get you, get you most of it. And this is with the rate all the way down, just so you can hear the individual steps. pretty random. You can't really predict what it's going to do. So that's that's one reason I don't find the slower settings to be terribly useful. They're just they're just too slow to really know what it's going to do behind the music you're playing. But once it starts getting faster, it's a little bit more interesting. 
So there we go. That is the filter sample hold and on Mad Bean's fish head board. And like I said, this was a surprisingly easy project to build. Um, the PCB and Mad Bean's documentation really helped keep this out of the fail bin. And I know that it's a kind of a notoriously difficult project to build. So um, I do recommend this one. It's been out for a little bit, but if you haven't checked it out, be sure to do so. And thanks for watching.